I'm Perry Clausen, and we're in Parlier, California right now in the middle of a peach orchard. Well, actually, these are nectarines. used to be peaches and were, were grafted over three years ago. But this is the middle of Fresno County where we have probably more peaches, plums, nectarine, grapes, and citrus than any place in the world. Uh, within 30 miles of where we're standing every year, there's about 120 million boxes of peaches, plums, and nectarines that, are, that come out of this area. And my own farm, I have uh, 20 acres with, with about 12 acres planted in pomegranates, which is a, a fairly new crop in this area. And we ship those both uh, to the fresh market and then with the, the, the seconds we'll, we'll ship for uh, juice and make pomegranate juice out of those. And I've been farming uh, most of my life, uh, part-time farming now. I also have a, a roadside stand not far from here where I sell watermelons and sweet corn during the summertime. Uh, we grow 10 acres of watermelons and 10 acres of sweet corn and, and have a stand that we sell for two months out of the year. <laughs> yeah. Well, we, we are in the, one of the best ag areas in the, in the state, but we also have probably the most pest problems of anywhere um, in the state as well because there's so many different crops that, that attract insects. But we, we always try to do things to prevent pests from coming in in the first place so we have minimum amount of treatment. One of the things we've learned in peaches, like in this background of this field you see here, is that we do a lot of orchard sanitation, where we will take all the any dried fruit or dried leaves around the base of the tree, push them away from the tree, and disc them up so that it's not a, a habitat for for those pests to overwinter or or for diseases to 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 form and then infect the next crop that comes next year. So we do that as a as an integrated pest management approach. We still occasionally have to spray. The, the way we find out uh, the timing is, is using pheromone traps. Uh, pheromone monitoring helps us get an idea when the, the moth flights are uh, occurring and when the best time we can, we can go out and spray for those insects. In the, in the tree industry, probably the most important thing is cleaning, having the orchard sanitation, mm -hmm. and then scouting for the best time to spray rather than July 1 is the time we spray for worms, so we all spray. Uh, that, that's you'll spray by calendar. Nowadays, we really want to hit target those insects so we know we're we're hitting them at their most at their their weakest point. Well, in this area, one of the th the, the first things we all try to do when we replace an orchard is laves or level scrape it. So if we furrow or irrigate, uh, use flood irrigation, then then we we make sure there's uniform water distribution around the road. So that that's one of the basic things. I'm getting ready to convert to drip irrigation here as, as a energy saving, as much as energy and water use savings. Uh, we, tr we try to uh, use water as, as, as infrequently as we can get away with. We're in a desert climate, so we don't get any rain, rainfall contribution to the uh, production of the crop. In the wintertime, it rains, and that helps uh, build up the subsoil, but we do have to irrigate uh, every, every two weeks here, pretty much on a regular basis when there's fruit on the trees. So we just try to uh, use as little water as we, as we possibly can. We have a power bill that we have to pay for pumping the water out of the ground. So there's, there's always a lot of consideration there to try to minimize.